Once upon a time, a baby dinosaur was born. Now, all this prehistoric fun is yours with talking baby dinosaur. Baby. baby dinosaur has six clever things to say. Welcome, Mama. I'm happy to be my mom. Hello, fat boy. I'm going to bite you now. That's my baby. Gotta let me. And I'll collect the entire Sinclair family. Earl, Frank. And a baby. Robbie, Charlene. And a baby. Yes, I'm the baby, too. Even Big B. Richfield. Official talking baby and dinosaur figures sold separately. Gotta love me. In this review, I will be taking a look at the six-figure toy line based off the Dinosaur TV show that aired from 1991 to 1994. These toys were made by Hasbro and released in 1991. The first figure up is the only non Sinclair family member to be made in this toy line, that being Earl's boss, B.P. Richfield. Let's start off by taking a look at the packaging. This figure is one of six in this toy line. Every figure in the line included the same card back with the same artwork. Richfield was the only non Sinclair family member to be made in this toy line. Bradley P. Richfield is the tyrannical boss of Earl Sinclair and a major antagonist of the series. He is a Triceratops and the owner of We Say So Industries. This figure does closely resemble the character from the show. The biggest difference is size. As in the series, the character was very large and usually towered over the other characters, but the figure is much smaller. In the show, he is usually seen sitting behind his desk. Now let's take a closer look at the figure. The head has some decent paint and sculpting. The horns are all painted a tannish brown. The majority of the skin color is blue, but does have added paint below the mouth. The eyes and mouth are also painted. The facial expression has an angry look that is consistent with the show. The skin has sculpted scales that look great. As always, I love when the sculptors of figures go way further than needed to. Moving down to the body, he is wearing his white shirt with suspenders and multicolored tie. The shirt has added sculpted vertical lines. Once again, something that adds to the figure but wasn't actually necessary. The hands have the same sculpting and extra paint as the head. Here's a side view of the figure. While the scale is smaller, the look is very close to the show, as the figure still retains the hunched back and large frame. His lower half is wearing blue pants that has his large tail sticking out the back. His legs are quite short, but very thick. The feet continue the same look as the head and arms. The large feet makes this figure have no problem standing. There are no peg holes to the bottoms of the feet, but there is added sculpting and paint. The tail looks great, with two large horns on the top of the tail and a large spike coming out the tip of the tail. Here's a look at the backside. The only articulation comes in the upper half of the body, being able to rotate side to side. Richfield comes with two accessories. First up is a clipboard with paper. Unfortunately, the entire accessory is brown with no added paint detail. Sculpt-wise, it actually looks really good. The back even is sculpted to look like it was made from wood. It's just a shame that there's no extra paint. The clipboard is able to be held in the right hand. The next accessory is a megaphone. Like the clipboard, the megaphone is also one color, this time done in yellow. It still contains extra sculpting. Also, as with the previous accessory, the megaphone can be held in the right hand. Richfield being able to hold onto its included accessories is a rarity in this line. The next figure up is the only daughter in the Sinclair family, and that being Charlene Sinclair. The card back is mostly the same as the other five figures in the line. The only difference coming from the name tag and the little bio on the back. Charlene Sinclair is a protoceratops and is one of the five main characters of the show. She is generally more interested in school popularity and the comforts of shopping than with real issues. She frequently gripes about her family or vents about her lack of social status. Now let's take a closer look at the figure. Just as with the other figures in the line, this figure of Charlene looks just like her TV show counterpart. Once again, I just can't get over the level of sculpting quality on these figures. While the majority of her skin color is green, her frill contains added blue paint, and the tiny horns protruding from the frill are painted brown. And turning to the side of the head, she has sculpted earrings that are painted yellow. The paint on the eyes turned out fantastic. They give the figure added realism. 
The inside of her mouth is painted. Charlene's wardrobe consists of a light purple sweater. The sweater itself even has added detailed sculpting to make it look like a real fabric material. Around her mouth down to her underbelly, as well as the palms of her hands, are painted a light tannish color. The fingernails on the hands are painted pink, and she has yellow and red bracelets worn on each wrist. Moving down to her lower half, you can get a good look at the sculpted scales on her legs. Her toenails are also painted the same pink as her fingernails. Looking at the side, you can get a glimpse of her tail. There are no peg holes on the bottoms of the feet, but they are painted the same color as the underbelly and hands. Looking closer at the tail, it does have a two-tone paint scheme, where the top of the tail is painted a light blue. This is a nice attention of detail from the show, as they could have easily skimped out on, but I'm glad they didn't. The great sculpting of the sweater continues on the back side, and here's a view of the back of her head. The only articulation on Charlene comes in the upper half of the body being able to rotate side to side. Charlene comes with two accessories. First up is a telephone. It is based on a very old looking rotary phone. The phone is molded in a black plastic with no extra paint detail. The handset is detachable. It is just held by a small clip. The cord is a softer, more pliable plastic, so it is able to be moved around. The bottom is hollow. And here's a look at the back side. And now comes the biggest problem with this toy line, and that being the hands are sculpted open, so Charlene cannot hold onto the phone. I don't understand why at least one hand couldn't have been sculpted to hold the accessories. The other included accessory is a necklace. It is molded in a yellow plastic. It is made with a more gummy plastic than the telephone. The necklace has an intriguing design to say the least. Personally, I'm not the biggest fan of this accessory, but it's a fine accessory regardless. The one good thing is Charlene can wear the necklace. It doesn't connect, but it can be placed on the body, and it usually stays in place pretty good. But nevertheless, it does give you an added display option. Next up is Charlene's brother, Robbie Sinclair. The card back is mostly the same as the other five figures in the line, the only difference being in the name tag and the little bio on the back. Robbie Sinclair is the oldest child in the Sinclair family. He's a bit of a rebel, often questioning his father's authority, and he also focuses on environmental issues. Robbie is the only Sinclair family member to ever wear shoes. Now let's take a look at the figure itself. Robbie, just like the other figures in this line, looks just like his TV counterpart. The sculptors of this line did such an amazing job recreating the show in figure form. The head is full of sculpted scales. The top of the head contains spikes that simulate a mohawk. The tips of the spikes have added yellow paint. There is also some added brown paint on the head itself. I think the figure looks the best when viewed from the side. I love how the eyes turned out. The eyes are painted amazing just like the rest of the figures in the line. Robbie's wardrobe consists of a school sports jacket. The figure is sculpted with his hands inside the pockets. For display purposes, this looks good, and I don't have any problems with it. The problem comes later, when we get to the accessories. Looking at the lower half, the sculpted scales of the skin continues. As I previously mentioned earlier, Robbie wears shoes. The shoes look like some red and white Converse Chuck Taylors. Looking at the side of the figure, you can see his long tail. There are no peg holes on the bottoms of the feet. The top of the tail contains added brown paint. What's really awesome about this jacket is the back of it has the school logo and the name on it. This is a very nice addition, as most figures around this time period would have left the back plain. I just love how they included this. The figure comes with two accessories. First up is a basketball. It is molded in an orange plastic, which is fine. The sculpting looks just like a basketball should, and even includes the lines of the basketball. As the hands are sculpted inside the jacket, this accessory is pretty pointless, since he obviously can't hold on to it. The second accessory included is a skateboard. It is molded in a purple plastic. Surprisingly, there is sculpted detail on the board to give it a textured appearance. The underside is plain though. The great thing about this accessory is Robbie is able to stand on it, so the figure can actually get some use out of it. Next up is the mother, Fran Sinclair. 
The card back is the same as the other five figures in the line, the only difference being in the name tag and the little bio on the back. Fran Sinclair is an Allosaurus. She is married to Earl Sinclair and together they have three children. Fran is very sensible and does nearly all of the housework, especially in the kitchen. She often feels unappreciated and wishes her family would spend more time talking together. Now let's take a look at the figure itself. Sculpt wise, Fran looks pretty much like she did in the TV show. The biggest difference to me comes in the overall paint job. The paint on the figure is more of a bluish green, while on the show is more of a normal green color. The eyes, like on all the other figures in the line, turned out fantastic yet again. They are without a doubt one of the standouts on the figure. Her lips are painted a dark pink. The skin color transitions from the bluish green to a light tannish color around the mouth, down the neck, and in the palms of her hands. Her skin doesn't appear to have all the sculpted scales as some of the other figures in the line. Her head crest turned out really nice, sculpt and paint alike. All the individual little horns are painted as well. Her fingernails are painted a dark pink like her lips. Her wardrobe consists of a pink sweater with a white collar. The sweater is very nicely sculpted, giving it an appearance of a real fabric material. Worn around her waist is a yellow apron. It is more simplified in design than the sweater, but it's still fine. The yellow color really pops from the figure. Moving down to her legs, there are more sculpted scales than the head had. Her toenails are painted black. Looking from the side, you can see her long tail. There are no peg holes on the bottoms of the feet, but there is added paint to the feet and the underside of the tail. Here's a look at the back side of the figure. The apron being sculpted tied is a nice attention to detail. The great sculpting on the sweater continues, and here's the back of the head. The only articulation comes in the upper half of the body, being able to rotate side to side. Fran comes with two accessories. First up is a cooking pot. It is molded in a silver plastic. The pot is simple in design, but looks like an average cooking pot. As much as Fran spent in the kitchen and cooking, this is a fitting accessory for her. The next accessory is a bit more interesting to say the least. It appears to be an animal frozen in a block of ice. The accessory is molded in a see-through plastic, but does have a bluish tint to it. As cool of an accessory as I think this is, I do wish the animal had been painted to make it easier to know what exactly you're looking at, but a very neat accessory nonetheless. This accessory fits inside the pot, so Frank can then begin cooking dinner. Now yet again comes the downside of this toy line. Since Fran's arms are sculpted outwards and her hands aren't in a gripping pose, she is unfortunately unable to hold on to the pot. This really is such a shame. It would have definitely added to her display if she was able to hold on to the pot. The handles are too narrow, so you can't even get her thumb squeezed in them. Once again, the best display option is just placing the pot on the ground next to her. Here we have arguably the most popular character in the show, Baby Sinclair. The card back is mostly the same as the other five figures in the line, the only difference coming in the name tag and the little bio on the back. The rest of the artwork is the same though. Baby Sinclair is the youngest member of the Sinclair family. He was the most popular and heavily marketed character from the show. His famous catchphrases were, I'm the baby, gotta love me, and not the mama. The latter is often said while hitting his father with a frying pan. Now let's take a look at the figure. The first thing to point out is this figure is not in the proper scale when compared to the other figures in the line. While BP Richfield was too small compared to his TV counterpart, Baby on the other hand is too large compared to his TV counterpart. Scale aside though, this figure turned out fantastic. It looks just like the puppet used in the show. In my opinion, this figure is the best in the line. The thing that stands out most to me about the head are those large purple eyes. While the paint is minimal on the head, the paint on the eyes and mouth turned out nice and clean. Here's the side view of the figure. While looking from the side, you can see how the tail further adds to the figure's size. The hands have chubby little fingers. The fingernails are painted, and there are small dimples sculpted on the hands. Baby has a cheerful, smiling expression on his face, showcasing his two baby teeth. Baby's outfit consists of a yellow shirt and a diaper. The sculpting of each contains wrinkles and folds, which add to the realism. Due to the position of the legs, there are no pegos on the bottoms of the feet. 
The legs, like the arms, are chubby and have sculpted wrinkles in the skin. The toenails are painted as well. Here is a look at the bottom of the figure. You can get a better look at the wrinkles in the skin. While the extra paint on the front side is more minimal, looking at the tail, there is added purple paint. I really appreciate that, as the time when these toys came out, it was very common for toys to have little to no added paint on the back side of the figures. There's nothing else going on with the shirt and diaper, but moving up the back, the head also has added purple stripes and dots. The inclusion of the extra paint really does make the figure that much more show accurate. The only articulation comes in the upper half, being able to rotate side to side. Baby Sinclair comes with two accessories. The first accessory up is a baby bottle. Written on the front of the bottle is meat. Extending from the underside of the bottle are two feet. This makes for a funny accessory. The bottle is molded in a brown plastic with no extra paint detail, but nevertheless, I do like this accessory. The next accessory is what I assume is supposed to be a baby rattle. The accessory is molded in a green plastic. It appears to be a cracked egg with what seems to be a tail or tentacle sticking out. While I prefer the other accessory more, I still like this one, and it is a nice addition. As nice as both accessories are, the downfall comes in that the figure cannot hold on to either of them. This is a common theme in this toy line, minus BP Richfield. It almost seems as though the accessories were an afterthought. I really wish one hand was able to hold on to the accessories. Really the only thing they are good for is displaying them next to the figure. Plus, how do you not include a frying pan or pot? Seems like a big missed opportunity. Last but not least is the mighty Megalosaurus himself, Earl Sinclair. Let's start off with taking a look at the packaging. The card back is the same as all the other figures in the line. The only difference coming in the name and the little bio on the back. Earl Sinclair is a Megalosaurus and is one of the lead characters in a Dinosaurs TV show. Earl is employed as a low-level tree pusher for the We Say So Corporation. Now let's take a closer look at the mighty Megalosaurus. Just like every figure in this toy line, Earl looks very close to his TV counterpart. Starting with the head, the figure yet again has beautifully painted eyes. All the eyes in this toy line turned out so good. Earl's skin color is mostly green in color, with tan running from his mouth to his underbelly, as well as the palms of his hands. The sculpting is nicely done, with the scales and wrinkles and folds of the skin. The top of his head is painted a dark brown. This is accurate to the show. Earl's facial expression consists of a smile. The scales continue onto the hands, and the fingernails are also painted a dark brown. Earl's wardrobe only consists of his signature red and black flannel shirt. I think the shirt turned out very nice, and even has sculpted buttons and a front pocket. Looking at the figure from the side, you can see the mass of the character, as in the show he was a little on the heavy side. The sculptors absolutely nailed his appearance. Moving down to the lower half, the sculpted scales are present yet again. His toenails are painted the same dark brown as the fingernails. I love the level of detail that was put into this figure. There are no peg holes in the bottoms of the feet, but they are painted the same color as the underbelly. Here is a look at the backside of the figure, and one of my only gripes with the figure. The top of the tail is green, when it should be brown like the top of his head. I'm sure they did this to cut cost, but it's a shame as several other figures in the line had the tops of their tails painted. You think they would have done the same for the main character. At least they continued the paint on the shirt. The figure's only articulation comes in the upper half of the body being able to rotate side to side. The figure comes with two accessories. First up is his hard hat that he wears at work. It is molded in a yellow plastic. The front of the hat has a sculpted W on it. It is hollow so it can be worn on the figure's head. It really just lays on the top of the head though, but at least now Earl is ready to knock some trees down. The next accessory up is his lunchbox. It is molded in a silver plastic. The thing I love the most is they sculpted a small animal's hands sticking out from the bars, indicating Earl prefers to eat live food. The opposite side just has the bar sculpted. The lunchbox is hollow. Once again, the Achilles heel of this toy line strikes yet again. Just like most of the accessories in this toy line, Earl is not able to hold onto the lunchbox. 
The lunchbox has a handle, but it's too small for the figure's hands to fit through. You can't even squeeze between the fingers. As amazing as the sculpting is in this toy line, you think they would have sculpted at least one hand that would be able to hold onto the lunchbox. The best thing to do is just place it next to the figure. At least he can wear the hat. So that is my review of the Dinosaurs TV show toy line. These were some of my favorite toys as a kid. Sadly, only six figures were made in this line, but they are six great looking figures. While the accessories aren't the most practical, the figures themselves are fantastic. They all have great likenesses to their TV show counterparts. My only wish was that the grandma had been made. If you were a fan of the show or the characters, I highly recommend you track these down and add them to your collection.